Hi everyone, this is Ida with Created to Create. Um, I'm here today, hopefully, uh, to answer, uh, I don't know, the Lord put in my heart to speak about baptism and the importance of it, or should I say to be or not to be baptized, um, because you know, there's a lot of people who are not, who are unsure if they need to be baptized. I know in some instances, some people have approached my daughter and told her, well, my pastor says I don't need to be baptized. And, um, and that kind of shocks me because if, if you're a pastor, I know that you read scripture and scripture clearly states, you know, that we must be baptized and, uh, for the remission of sin. And um, so I got up really early, guys, because I think like on Wednesday, I woke up early and what was on my mind was baptism. The first word that came out of my mouth was baptism for whatever reason. I don't know who it is that needs to hear this, but I'm going to do this to the best of my ability because I'm not a preacher. I'm not a minister. I'm not a teacher. I'm not even an elder in our church. But when the Lord tells me to do something I'm not going to say I'm always obedient, but I try to be. And uh, sometimes, you know, we get to where we're not sure and we kind of shy away from doing what we feel is right. And in this instance, you know, uh, I don't want to be disobedient to the Lord. I want to draw closer to the Lord and I want to do things that please the Lord. Because after all, we were created to bring God glory. That, that's what we were created for. So I'm going to be obedient, and I hope that you're patient with me. Like I said, I, I, I'm not a minister. I'm not, nothing. I just believe in the Lord. I, I study scripture. You know, I talk to people about the Lord, and in a sense, this is what I'm doing for my faithful Friday. Friday. I'm not going, going to share a project, a craft with you or anything, because I wanted to take away from the importance of this topic. Anyway, I, I got up real early, and I was studying and, um, and and kind of trying to find scripture that talked about how important it was to be baptized. Now, between, before John the Baptist came, he was prophesied 500 years before he even came. And John was sent for that very purpose to baptize. And I don't believe that the Lord does anything for no reason. Uh, so, you know, John wasn't part of the, you know, he was prophesied about in the Old Testament of a prophecy that was to come. So John the Baptist was, uh, like I said, for the purpose of, bap of to baptize with water and to make straight the, straight the road or the way for the Lord. So, like I said, there was 500 years in between that when he was prophesied about. I mean, and that kind of, when you read about that, and those are some facts that we really don't pay attention. Because unless you really, you know, go out and do your research, you wouldn't even know that that, that much time had passed before this prophecy had come true. And um, anyway, in Matthew three eleven, you know, it does tell us about John the Baptist. Uh, you know, he John the Baptist baptized with water for the repentance of sin. To repent is to is to regret doing something, to deeply regret doing something, and, and, and stop doing it. So that's what, what for it was for the remission of sin. And when something goes into remission, uh, let's say it's, it's cancer or anything, when it goes into remission, it kind of stops, it slows down. So that's the same with sin. You know, the word says that, you know, when we accept the Lord as our Lord and Savior, that, you know, we that we should be holy because he is holy. And uh, so anyway, that is the importance of of being uh, baptized because that that is like you're made clean you're made righteous in the eyes of the Lord so like I said in Matthew 3 13 through 17 you know it talks about the Lord Jesus come the Christ you know being baptized by John the Baptist and even though John the Baptist was um, you know he was just a man and when when Jesus came to him, and I and I'm gonna read it to you because hopefully you will better understand this. And I have this open here for a reason. But let's go ahead and look at Matthew um, thir uh, three. It's in Matthew chapter three, verse thirteen through seventeen, and it says, "Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to the Jordan unto John to be baptized of him." Now, why would the Lord why would the Lord, who is God, 
just another manifestation, come to John the Baptist to be baptized when he was perfect because there's no sin in God. There is no darkness in the Lord. So, but he came to John the Baptist to fulfill the prophecy because this had already, you know, he, it's, it's Jesus Christ, the Christ being obedient to God, even though Jesus Christ is God. And this was a difficult thing. And it is difficult for a lot of people to understand. And, and really all it is, is a different manifestation of God. There's God, there's the Christ, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. That That's all God. It's just a different manifestation of God. So um, anyway, why would Jesus have to come to John the Baptist to be baptized if there was no importance? If, you know, there was no importance. And he didn't have any sin. He didn't have nothing to repent of because he was a perfect sinless man. And even though he was man, he was also deity. He was also a God or God. And um, anyway, it goes on to say, but John forbade him. Like John, you know, didn't want to saying, I have need to be baptized of thee and cometh thou to me. In other words, he's saying, I need you to baptize me and you want me you come to me to do it? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. To fulfill all righteousness. So there is a purpose because this, when you are baptized, you are made right with God. You are made clean with God. And um, and then he suffered him and, and Jesus you know, and Jesus let John the Baptist, John the Baptist, baptize him. So it it really clearly tells you right here the importance of it to be made righteous, to be made clean in the in God's eyes, and um, and then I was reading further on and just trying to find different um verses about baptism, and one of them that really stuck out for me uh, quite a bit was um. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. Really, really quick, because I wrote down a bunch of notes. And there's one I do want to... Uh, okay, Matthew 28, chapter 28, verse 18 through 20. And uh, I hope this is in frame. But right here it says... You know that this and this right here is already after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He had already been crucified, and he had already risen. And they said, and Jesus came and spake unto them. It's talking about the apostles, saying, "All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them. Keyword: baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost." teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Listen to that. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all, not just part, not for a certain amount of time. It says all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So what this is, this is saying, it's saying, continue to do it. And I'm going to be with you always. It's not saying stop at a certain point, And then it's not necessary. It's void. No, he's saying, continue to do it. And I will be with you always. So for me, this is like, like this really touch. Um, you know, I think that it can't be any clearer than what it says here. And even, you know, when you read, and, and then I went on to find some more, you know, uh, things about baptism and that I've read before, but because my mind isn't what it used to be, and I don't remember a lot of things, but I was also reading of um, Cornelius, and he was a Roman, and uh, he had been praying, you know, he believed in the Lord, and he had been praying at the same time he was praying, uh, Peter was on the roof of the house while waiting waiting for the meal to be cooked. And he went into a trance and the Lord showed him a vision. And he brought down a blanket that had all different types of animals. And the Lord tells, uh, and God tells Peter to kill and eat. 
you know, and the Lord did this three times. And Peter was, you know, Peter was saying, I I've never eaten this. This is unclean. You know, the Jews couldn't eat certain things. And, and then the Lord chastised him and said, what I have called clean, you don't call unclean. Now, it's not talking specifically about food. It's talking about people that were not Jewish, that were not from, you know, Israelites, because, you know, the Lord came, Israel is his people. And, and, but, you know, not that the Gentiles were an afterthought, because the Lord knows everything. He knew everything that was going to happen before it happened. But this more or less is where it starts coming in, where the Lord was for not just the Jews, but the Gentiles. Anyway, he told Cornelius, you know, that he, an angel appeared before Cornelius. And let me see if I can find it, because I want to read this to you and, and you know, kind of share with you how important this is. Uh, Cornelius said, four days ago I was fasting, and this is going to be in Acts 10, and I'm going to start in, in uh, verse 30. And it says, and Cornelius said, four days ago I was fasting until this hour. At the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold... A man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. What he's saying, the Lord heard his prayers and the Lord accepted his, uh, his uh, you know, charity to the poor, what he gave to the poor. Then he said, send therefore to Joppa and call hither Simon, who was Peter whose surname is Peter. He, he is in a lodge in the house of one Simon, a tanner by the seaside, who when he cometh shall speak unto thee. And immediately, therefore, I sent unto thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. And, and you know, I'm glad that you have come, he's telling Peter. Now, therefore, we are all present. You know what? I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to read it to you in, in my NLT, because I think that uh, simplifies it. A little bit more and I think it, you know you'll be better able to understand what I'm talking about okay it right here it says and he told me Cornelius your prayer has been heard and your gifts to the poor have been noticed by God now send me messengers to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter he is staying in the home of Simon a tanner who lives near the seashore so I sent for you at once and it is good of you to come now, we are all here waiting before God to hear the message the Lord has given you. And then, then Peter replies, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. In every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. Again, here is talking about right. It's talking about righteousness. When we are baptized, we are made righteous in the eyes of God. So this is the message, the good news for the people of Israel, that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. Do you know what happened throughout you? Okay, then it's talking about John the Baptist, you know, when John began preaching. But right here, and I want to read this rest, the rest to you. It says, even, I'm going to read in uh, chapter 10, still verse 44. And it says, even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon who were listening, all who were listening to the message. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles too, for they heard them speaking in other tongues and praising God. And then Peter asked, can anyone object to their being baptized now that they have received the Holy Spirit just as we did? So he gave orders for them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ Afterwards, you know, and then it says afterwards, Cornelius invited him to stay with him several days. But my point is that, you know, the Lord sent Peter to baptize and to minister to Cornelius's family. So obviously, baptism is very important. And because it, it's not the Lord uh, suggest, a suggestion that the Lord is making, he commanded to go and preach to all the nations and to baptize him in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
So, you know, that pretty much is what I wanted to talk about. And I did record this earlier and I had to redo it because I was really fumbling and it wasn't good enough for the Lord. When I do something for the Lord, I want it to be good enough. But again, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a teacher. I'm not a minister. I'm not even an elder in the church. But the Lord did set, put this in my heart. For whoever you are that needed to hear this, yes, baptism is very important. And I personally, myself, I don't... um when somebody says something to me about scripture or about the Lord and I don't recall it, I'll ask them, show me where in the Bible it says this. And if it's not in the Bible, then I just don't worry about it. But this right here, this Holy Bible is my roadmap. I am not saved by the things that I do. I am saved by grace, but also Without faith, we don't. If, when we don't step out on faith and be obedient to God, when we don't do that, it's impossible to please God. And being obedient to God also means to submit to being baptized as the Lord submitted to being baptized as well. So that being said, guys, I, I don't know who it was that needed to hear this. And if you have any questions and I can answer them for you, just leave me a comment and I will definitely answer. And again, like I said, this is not my opinion. This is scripture. Thanks for watching, you guys. I hope everyone has a great day and God bless. Bye.